What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Out Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You may have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. You know I blame it on. Education and politicians, no one's willing to step up and speak. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pace Radio Show. As always, we are live here at lifestyleradio.ca. I'm your host, Dal Graham. Tonight, my joint host, Kim Cooper, has brought us a guest who is a person who works hard and is well known in the cannabis community for helping patients to putting the squeeze on some buds. But before we find out more, I'd like to have a little few minute talk with Kim about some recent news. Kim? How you doing tonight, Al? How's everybody out there in Radio Land tonight? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm actually getting over a cold. Oh no. I hate yeah, summer yeah. colds. <laughs> summer colds, yeah, exactly. So so yeah, a little stuff up, whatever, but you know, the show's gotta go on, right? <laughs> That's right. Show must go on. <laughs> okay, Kim. Uh the uh, what I'm seeing here in the news it seems to be a continuation of the cannabis uh, raids in Toronto. Yeah, lots more raids going on uh again today. I mean when is this gonna stop? I, I don't know. And, and it just seems to be, like, constant. You know, every few days, there seems to be a few more. You know, is it who's going to get busted this week? Yeah, it's Russian roulette out there for these dispensary yeah. owners. Uh, it really is. It is. And, you know, um, along that line with the dispensaries, finally, the, um, the centers were able to get before uh, Toronto City Council there today. It's been delayed in the past, put off. And finally, they were able to speak. I don't know if you caught the videos that were online. Yeah, I did. Um, I heard uh, tra- the two Tracys, where the Tracy duos were up there the, today speaking, and I caught the couple live feed today when they were on. Uh, Tracy Lamory and Tracy Curley. I love the fact that Tracy Curley opened up the discussions in Toronto City Council with people from the Noise Reduction Committee overpowering her while she spoke and they had to be brought up to order by the chairperson. I love the fact that Tracy Curley pointed out to everyone that was listening and watching that it was indeed the noise reduction committee that was causing the commotion which was quite ironic. It is. It is quite ironic. Yeah, uh, Lisa Campbell was there speaking. I saw Amy Brown post that she was heading over there as well. Um, They talked about the benefits of the uh, Compassion Centers uh, how they're helping the patients to how they're helping the community. I know that um, I believe it was Tracy. She talked about um, no, actually it was it was Tracy Demore. She talked about how uh, True Compassion Toronto had gone around and doing a neighborhood cleanup and picking up um, needles and stuff like that. Yeah, and how there is no other resource that is around to do that in yeah. that particular neighborhood. So they're they're taking the time to make their neighborhood clean and a better yeah. place for everyone. And um, they were there uh, requesting um, regulations such as what's going on in Vancouver, uh, Victoria, and they mentioned Calgary as well. Yes, they did. Yeah, uh, so, quite quite a bit going on in the East Coast, and Ontario so, is really lagging up the rear. Well, you look at you look at in in um, Saint John, New Brunswick, uh, the police chief there says um, cannabis is a low priority. They have more urgent things that they have to deal with, from homelessness to. Um, Vagrants, and then they talked about. Uh, then you got what's going on in Toronto, and then you see regulations and stuff going on in the West Coast. So, is our is our laws being equally applied across our country? No, absolutely not. Um, it seems Ontario uh, and and even Manitoba, for that matter, to some extent, are being squeezed out in the middle. Um, the East and the West are climbing on board. They're seeing the light. They're getting educated. And, uh, you know, they're, they're saying no to the propaganda and yes to the facts. 
Um, yeah. And the mid of this country, section of this country, seems to be a bulge in the center. I don't know if it's left over from Stephen Harper's waste or what, but uh, something's got to be done. Well, there's one, there's one interesting fact that uh, Tracy Curley pointed out uh, during her, her talk with them, and that was that um, they had the big raids, Project Claudia. Um, there are now more dispensaries and compassion centers in Toronto than before the raid. Yeah. The day of the raid. Yeah, that's so right. Really, and what's, what's that, what has all that achieved? And it's achieved nothing except except spending every tax dollar, uh, payer's dollar in that city. It's costing every taxpayer in that city is, is their dollars that are paying for these rates. And they're accomplishing nothing because even when they get to court, judges and juries are not convicting once they get there, if they even make it to court because right. um, prosecutors are refusing to, con to take the case forward. So it's a waste. Ultimately, it's a waste all the way around. I'm sure it is. Well, uh, I'm sure our guests will have, you know, during tonight's uh, discussion, we'll probably weigh in on in these types of situations. So I'm sure. <laughs> so, so at this time, I'd like to bring the person who I described as hardworking in the campus community and loves to squeeze some buds. And I'd like to welcome John, a uh, fellow, to the Pace Radio Show. Hello, John. How are you? John? Oh, we lost John. John is frozen, perhaps. Well, we have John Burfellow with us tonight. I'm sure he's going to be rebooting his system or whatever and uh, getting right back and turning his mic on. Um, and he is a very well-known cannabis advocate in Canada and all around the world. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, got <laughs> he's got so much stuff posted out there. Uh, I don't know how nobody would know who he is. But uh, well, we'll work on trying to get uh, get John in here. But uh, as far as well, do you, you want to go back to the dispensaries and the Toronto situation and how things are going on here in the country? Sure. Uh, we, we, well, yeah. we well, recently we had uh, the Lift Expo took place out on the west coast. It was held in Vancouver this past weekend. Um, quite a different event from what I've heard from different people than the one that took place in Toronto. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I hear it's. Uh, it had a di different atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, it seems it was more business oriented, uh, and uh, compared to the one that took place in Toronto, was more of a, a public venue where where regular people came out to see new products and what was going on. And the one on the west coast was more business oriented, and businesses and uh, looking for new products to present in their store with less public attention. Yes. I saw that uh, also that... Um... Hello. Hello, Hello there John. Hi. Hi. I'm sitting here walking around the, uh, the CCHQ um, office in the back here. They just finished off a show, and I guess the internet got bounced off for a second, so... <laughs> I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened to me? I was just going to do a dab with a joint. And... <laughs> well, we're glad you're back and we got it fixed. That's awesome. We were trying to get some time. I said it might get a little loud in here because they just finished off a uh, Greg show with Mayor Wanwan and uh, Kush Queen and Al. So they're kind of coming in and out, and I'm on the other part of the office. But uh, we'll see what happens here. They're, they're loud sometimes. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. We'll muddle through. Yeah, we'll get it done. We'll get it through. All right. Well, uh, oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, John Burfellow. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. Uh, usually what we, uh, what we do here is... Uh, Get the joint host, get the questions going, and I'll jump in along the way. Uh, we have Perfect. we have a couple breaks during the show, and uh, I'm sure we'll touch many topics, won't we, Kim? We certainly will. We certainly will. For those of you that aren't aware, I don't know how you could not be. But a little bit of history on our Mr. Burfellow this evening. Uh, back in 2005, you experienced an accident, 28-foot fall. Uh, you're injured severely. Uh, released from hospital after a long period of time in the hospital. 32 pills a day. All of this 
where you are today began with brownies at a compassion club in Vancouver and Dr. Paul Hornby. You want to tell us a bit about your story, John? Oh, sure. You know, um, basically just kind of started from there. Um, I fell 20 feet in the concrete in 2005 and suffered multiple injuries. Broke my neck in four places, shattered my arm at 15, broke my back, broke my ankle, shattered my ankle. And they put me full of uh, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs from everything from they had me so many opiates, I basically couldn't shit, uh, antidepressants, I was depressed, everything. And, and that was just the way the system was going. Uh, I, I walked in the Green Cross Society uh, and actually started from the British Columbia Compassion Club Society. And it was uh, the beautiful brownies that were being baked by uh, Paul Hunt and research with Dr. Hornby. And they were decarboxylating. And learning more about that sped me into being uh, published on natural cannabis and pain control with Dr. Hornby and uh, Manju Sharman and Reese Stegman and uh, PubMed Case Journal. So some international really good uh, journals uh, medically. And uh, started more from there over time. Um, well, I've always been growing, so I, I started doing some videos on how I was able to control my pain with uh, cannabis and pain control. It's kind of been – that's kind of what's going on with me now, I guess. Uh, so from there, you're, you're, you're off of all the pills. You do strictly cannabinoid therapy. You're <coughs> educating the public via YouTube. Your video list on YouTube is extensive. For anybody that wants to know anything about cannabis, I strongly suggest they go there. Uh, now, today, you are into a lot of different things in the growing field. Um, your, your recent series this year, I think, on growing from seed to, to the end, I watched it recently, and it's, it's quite extensive. It was a lot of fun, you know. It's it was and for me. Uh, cannabis is a, is a quality of life. So getting out of bed every day to water and look after my plants really gave me a better quality of life. And and being able to show people how I was able to lead that better quality of life led into me filming and showing you the series and showing you what I do and how I able to kind of move forward with what I've been going through. And the plant was a huge part of my life. So I kind of everybody kept asking. So I was like, okay, fine. I'm gonna grab a camera and just kind of film this stuff. We really, really appreciate it. I know I do. I have learned a ton from you in the last three years that I've been following you myself. I know that. Um, uh, some of the stuff you've gone through is amazing. Tell me a little bit about your WCB claim. And they actually named you in legal documents as a legal cannabis, me medical cannabis educator slash advocate. That is actually yes. a job title now. Is that right? Now that is correct. So, um, of course, uh, when I first fell, I started using cannabis uh, for pain control, and, and Workman's Compensation Board did not like that. So I have 21 appeals against WCB for WCAT decisions. I also have Workman's Compensation Board and BC Supreme Court to have cannabis covered for injured workers. Um, they, they basically would not fund me to do anything with cannabis, so I, my back to work program over time, I was volunteering for Green Cross Society for so many years. Um, they said uh, that was basically the platform what I did there. And they wanted me to have a back to work program. I says, well, I can go work at a hydroponic store. And they go, what are you gonna do? I said, well, I'm gonna educate people on how to get licenses, um, how to grow their own and, and more understanding of pain control using, uh, from not using pharmaceutical drugs. And they said, well, what job position is that? I said, well, I'm a legal medical cannabis educator slash advocate. That's what I do. And they put it on paper, and they funded me for that, and they still do today. They pay me $569 a month, uh, and I get a full pension, which is all paid through through WCB. So I basically get a back-to-work program, um, the whole nine yards for my pain control and what happened, and that's be my job title. And uh, twice a week, I work at a local hydroponic store. Pacific Northwest Garden Supplies in Mission right now. I've worked at their main store in Surrey. Uh, that was the beginning start where they were letting me actually medicate on their on their grounds in the back, and everything was done through WorkSafe BC and stuff. This was it was quite a program. I kind of try to put them through, and uh, I still today that's what I do uh, twice a week, eight hours a week, and uh, they fund me to do that. 
Amazing story, John. And what you've what done for in that uh, province is is astounding. And hopefully, other provinces that are struggling with the same issues with their workplace boards are watching and learning. Well, you know what the whole thing. Thing is, is with the system and how it runs, is they actually use the, the the laws that they denied me with my cannabis use here in BC come from Alberta, so it's out of province. Uh, it's it's interesting how the whole thing works. Now in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, someone has won the right to have the cannabis covered by WCB, but of course, still today they will not cover it. And same with uh, Nova Scotia. So we do have people winning, but once we win, the compensation board goes, "Oh, that's fine. We're not going to pay it." So it's uh it's kind of it's 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 frustrating knowing that this is what we use for our pain control. This is what we use as a medicine when it states clearly in the act that they have to endure all costs related to my injury, which is growing my own, my nutrients, everything I buy from my garden, the hydro I put into it, and that's not the work. Yeah. Right. So, um, and I have billed them for Health Canada. Oh, uh, uh, weed that I bought from Health Canada and seeds that I purchased from Health Canada to grow my own is what started my BC Supreme Court challenge because I purchased seeds from Health Canada, which is all legal pot to grow my own. So that's where this whole fight has started from. Yeah, from the original MMAR. Yes, and I still have those seeds today. <laughs> Two packs left. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know what? And 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 it's build. And that's what I build. That's what I build. Uh, work with K- work safe BC for, and that's what sits in the courts of the BC Supreme Court is me billing them for seeds for them to cover that, and that was part of that whole system. So uh, we'll see what happens. Probably going to take another ten, fifteen years. Um, that's funny that you should say those numbers because I was just going to ask you on your original video you said it's going to be about 10 or 15 years before this gets to court that was a number of years ago and you're still yeah. the same, same number you know, you know what it's been five I have to do a reconsideration through WCAT as the system changes I'm not asking for that reconsideration because I have to ask for it until we see this whole platform for legalization to come in. I'm waiting for Health Canada to make the decision so then I can hit them with legal grounds of paperwork to go back on it because I can only ask for reconsideration once. So I'm really playing my cards right now. I, I gotta, I, I'm watching the whole system unfold before I make my next move. It's like a game of chess when you're playing against these governments, right? I don't have yeah. to act right now. I can sit back and watch that, 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 that board for a while because really, it ain't doing anything right now. And because I have them in BC Supreme Court, I'm pretty much exempted on um, my way of why I look at it. I'm, I, I'm in court over this to have my cannabis covered for my pain control. So I'm pretty much, I'm not applying for any new licenses. I'm not doing anything with Health Canada. I'm waiting for my system to go through. Right. And you know what? You've done it so smart to date. I, I mean, I don't doubt that this is what you're doing is correct now. Um, I'm so anxious to see the outcome of this case. Uh, it's uh, pivotal for so many patients. Oh well, if we win this coverage, that will be that will work for people like with ICBs or anything like that. They they have to do all costs. It's in their section two. It's in their whole platform. So this is a cost related to my injury that is accepted through the federal government and being prescribed by not one but several doctors. Don't forget, I got over forty seven doctors in total uh, over the years for what uh, I've been going through. So even right now, to having major surgeons at the Spinal Cord Research Center here in Vancouver. I had three surgeons work on me, and they're all, they're all gun hole. They say, don't stop what you're doing. Perfect. Perfect. So, I mean, case. next step is, is uh, College of Physicians and Surgeon General. Like, really, that's the next step in this game for me. I, I got, they have to, they, they've lied. They've lied and said that this has no medical value, and there is proof written all over me that there is. Well, you're the test case, right? Well, you know what? That's why I got to do what I'm doing, because... People say, oh, I use my pain control, and I turn and I show them the zipper and how they took up my C4 and C5, and I use no prescription. Well, they gave me, this is, this is great, in the hospital, when I had because I recently had surgery back in January 29th, so I'm speeding up. I'll probably jump all over the place a little bit, but um, they took away my natural supplements, amino acids, left me with my cannabis, and said because they didn't know how the natural supplements would react with my surgery and gave me morphine. 
So, so I mean, it was amino pretty cool. Amino yeah. acids are bad, but morphine is good. But they still have my amino acids. Like I take my natural GABA, tyrosine, diophenylalanine, and these are all like precursors to, for adrenaline to help with a fatigue when you're in a lot of pain, to stuff to slow down pain transmission. Like that's a whole other part of going back to working with Dr. Hornby in the Green Cross Society of BC, and uh, well, Bree and a few other people of coming up with a, a regime. Um, of taking different amino acids with converted forms of THC to help with my pain. And that's where I got published. And that's where my whole, like Paul says, I want to tell the world how cannabis helps me so much. That's why I do what I do because shit, I'd be fucked if it wasn't for it. You know what I mean? So why would I want to see other people leading and feeling that same quality of life that I get every day? Exactly. Let's, um, we're going to go for a breakdown. And I want to hear more about uh, some of the stuff that you do with Paul Hornsby and educating the public and that. Uh, when we come back from the break, all right. Sounds awesome. good. Right. No problem. Uh, tonight's uh, bumper music. Our guest is in the West Coast, and so we're going to have some music by the Hicks and their song "Good Old BC Smoke." When we return, Kim and I will continue our talk with our guest, John Burfellow. This is the Pace Radio Show here on LifestyleRadio.ca. <laughs> You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. All right, boys. Now, don't forget, I'm the director. Billy, grab your guitar. Gabby, grab your guitar. All right, boys, let's do it. Hey, hi out there. It's in the air. It's BC, but tonight, the pressure blows. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of auto flower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. All first-time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t-shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995. 1-844-843-7995. Or visit us at ccnexus.global. The following is a public service announcement from the Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners Society. The Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners Society is a non-profit organization dedicated to ensuring improved access to therapeutic cannabis and cannabis byproducts in Canada. With a federal government that has committed to legalizing cannabis, we feel it is our duty to ensure that the medicinal use of cannabis doesn't get lost in the process and that there are clear distinctions made between the medicinal and recreational use of cannabis. It is our mission to ensure that government regulation doesn't get in the way of a sick disabled or terminally ill person's right to use or produce this amazing natural health product. If you would like to get involved, you can contact us on the internet www.canadiantherapeuticcannabispartners.com On Facebook, CTCP Society Or search Canadian Therapeutic Cannabis Partners This is Al Graham of the Pace Radio Show. Are you keeping pace, as in keeping people advocating cannabis education? If you're not, and you're a cannabis consumer, then why not? Others are working hard every day to help educate people about cannabis, so you can enjoy your daily 420. Get involved and speak out. Be loud and proud so that you can keep pace. Tune into the Pace Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear about people advocating cannabis education here on lifestyleradio.ca. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like WIC, Ebb and Flow, Drip, or Aeroponic System, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. 
If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. BMA offers cannabinoid testing. So if you want to prove you've got good medicine, head to BMA Hydroponics and prove it. The pressure blows and the embers glow and they give the bong a light. The buds they grind, I do find this shit's really insane. The crowd, it roars, cause Bobby scores some BC Mary Jane. Oh, the good old BC smoke is the best smoke you can toke. And the best smoke you can toke is the good old BC smoke. Hello, we are back, and this is the Pace Radio Show, and we are live at lifestyleradio.ca, and we are also live at Shoutcast, Tune In Radio, as well as that Spreaker. And just a quick note to say to, that our sponsor, BMA Hydroponics, is growing, and that's not just the plants. I'm talking about recently the store has, uh, I was in and talked to Ross and Deb Middleton, the owners of the store, and they are expanding. They've informed me that uh, some of the changes are including not only more growing equipment, but also uh, vaping accessories as well as extraction equipment. That includes the rosin presses and so on and so forth. So uh, go to bmahydroponics.com and uh, you'll see all the stuff uh, that's new there. So you can learn more. Yep. Uh, tonight on the Patient Radio Show, uh, joint, uh, we're here with joint host Kim Cooper as well as our guest, uh, patient advocate uh, John Burfalo. Uh Before the break, Kim and John, we were talking about um, Dr. Hornby and, and uh, education and stuff like that. When, um, John, uh, yes. before I hand you back over to Kim, I saw you at the TY Expo with uh, Dr. Harmby, and you had a setup where you, you the two of you worked together um, to educate um, uh, audiences and, and people like that. Was that something that you did uh, not only at TY, but uh, at other locations, uh, colleges or universities or anything like that? Yes, I did uh, several uh, different interviews. Uh, I, I, Hempology 101, I did several ones on the island with Ted and uh, Paul and Gail and everybody over there. We did one from Nanaimo. I, I've done some talks about Jim's Weeds. So we also did one at Carnegie here for um, uh, down in Vancouver. We've done some talks for <laughs> uh, BC Health Authority with uh, Bree and stuff at uh, one little platform. So I've done quite a few talks with Paul's in those beginning stages of being able to get off my pharmaceutical drugs using cannabis and because of his publications, he always used me in all of the and all the talks, and we work well together. It's uh, I've always I've always thought it was great to, to reach out as in public education to to people that um, you know that are wanting to learn, and then people who are surprised by what they can learn because they didn't expect to hear that. And then you know when you hear it directly from a patient and and a physician that's uh, like Dr. Hornby working together, it uh, makes it all that much uh, stronger. Well, I was also working with other doctor, Dr. Sharman, uh, Greece. I mean, she was an RN nurse, uh, and she did the first practicum with the British Company Compassion Club Society. So she was very much involved in education and all that, too. So it was a really good platform for everybody because a lot of professionals, and me, the patient, who suffered traumatic injuries, where they're like, you can't really not say, you can't, oh, it doesn't work for him. Well, and mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, what's wrong with you? Well, I fell 28 feet. I've got 18 injuries. I've had six major surgeries. They said it destroyed the left side of my body. So uh, I did an, an empowering health series. It's on my Facebook page, YouTube page, uh, a whole video series on on that. Well, not series, but a little, little um, blurb of uh, how the beautiful brownies, the compassionate clubs, the amino acids, amino acids and how recovery like the cannabis community was really a huge huge part of that uh, they take you in and they help you and uh, that's one thing you do get when you when you kind of get yourself involved with the community we don't push away we, we, we pull people in towards us we want to yep. want to give you more you know that's that's yep. Yep. that's a special thing too guys people won't look at that the, the community just it, it grabs the ones that truly need it and bring them in and and show them a better quality of life and 
I mean, that happened with me, so why wouldn't I want to yeah. continue that with everybody else, you know? And every time that, you, that a patient, that a patient uh, shares a story such, such as, as yourself, the, um, the, uh, it, it helps improve it improves everybody or the, what people can see how cannabis can help people, you know? So it improves their, their perception of cannabis because of the stigma, so much stigma out there. And now when they see somebody like yourself and other, other advocates that are speaking up, and sharing their stories, um, it helps. It helps improve everything. Patients oh. helping patients once again. That's right. That's right. It's exactly. always it's exactly how it always happens. Yeah. It's it's the ones that are suffering and and, and trying the hardest that help the most. Yeah, you see that. Yeah. And uh, hey, uh, those are the ones that uh, a lot of what you see is what I've always seen is the people they they listen. Certain people do. Certain people like blah, but. When I'm at Safe in the Lab, how are you doing today in the morning? I'm, like, I'm very well. I smoke hash. And they laugh. And I'm like, yeah. Like, I just did a big bong rip. Like, and they took, and this is when I was like, I had, you could see the big scar on the back of my neck or when I had, you know, big wires coming out of my elbow. They're like, yeah, well, wow. I'm like, yeah, this is what I got to use right now. I'm doing really well. And, and people listen. They want to learn more and how it worked. They're like, wow, really? Well, my brother or my sister or my friend's friend. And they and they always relate to someone that maybe, they, can you help me or can you? And I think that's uh, where the videos came into play, guys. You know, has that slowly performed? It was like, at one point, it's like, what can I do? Uh, my phone was going off the hook and I... I there's over 33,000 emails on one of my accounts of people asking questions. I mean, <laughs> I'll get to them, guys. Just so you know, there, there's a lot of emails there. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of and, things and, to write. And, and then the whole thing is, 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 is you want to answer everyone personally. You, you really want yeah. to. And, and it's like six months later, you feel bad. You're like, oh, fuck. But it's, that's like I said, that's, that's where the videos came into play and in showing people what I was going through. Yeah, well, right. you've always... You've always been there to help patients. Uh, I know when I met you in uh, Toronto at the expo there, um, you know, the, 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 it was like a thousand people that you had helped, you know, getting MMAR yeah. papers and, and uh, you know, so this is all continuation of all that. It's all different aspects of going on helping people. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it, where it led me today with even with, uh, you know, finding Medtainer and it being a huge platform of, of making a part of my education and stuff like that and now just seeing it everywhere which just makes me smile it's like everywhere you look and every and the way the system's changing it's it's, it's amazing to see because uh, it's like 11 years ago I always call it 11 years 11 days is what I went through until I got to where I am today that's it that's it uh, yeah. your 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 uh, investments and and to uh, publicizing Meditainer and, and taking Meditainer to market um, what a fantastic contraption. I think everybody I know owns one, and I don't know anybody that's gone back to a regular grinder since we got them. <laughs> I know, it's funny. It's, it really is. Um, I, I mean, for me, it was Medi One, Medi Kush, and uh, I, I went on a, a getaway because uh, of everything I was going through, and I went to where I was born in 1941 for the Cannabis Cup and 25th Annual Cannabis Cup in 2012, and and ran into a gentleman uh, and Kurt, and we had a great conversation, and he was showing me this container, and I was like, "Well, dude, you got to do this," and we started talking more, and I was like, "Hey, I want to bring these to Canada," and he's like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." That was four years ago. <laughs> 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 And I'm Canada in Canada. Flooded. And oh yeah, everywhere. And not just, just Canada, but these have taken a real big step and, and, and its way because it was initially made for geriatric patients and pediatric patients in third world countries for grinding up their pills to put into their food. So it was a medical device. And and for me that, that whole everything and it was just it was like wow, I really it worked. And I wanted to, I, I gave so many of those things away to everybody. I said, yeah, have one. You gotta have one. You gotta have one. You gotta have one. Here, have one. Have one. Here, this will work. <laughs> because you had so many people that didn't, couldn't use their hands or there's other things. They, they had in pain and... Oh, I had so many issues with every grinder I've ever owned. All the metal yeah. ones, all the plastic ones. I have arthritic hands. When my hands are swollen, I cannot turn those bastards 
they just won't go. They get gummed up. They get stuck. You can't move it. Now your stuff is stuck inside and you can't get it out. I mean, it was just problematic after problem is if your hands were falling you through. See, yeah, I've talked to many people that think that it's great that they can store their buds in there. Because a lot of people I see, like I pre-roll everything. A lot of people like to roll and then, and they can consume right away. So yeah. they, you know, they can store their their nice buds in there, show their buddies, you know, how their buds look and smell and everything, and then grind it up and it can just slide right out into a paper and <laughs> twist it up. That's it. And for yeah. me, I'm a bomb girl. So, there you go. I yeah. mean, you know, there's nothing better. If I, I can break it up, I use what I want. Oh, there's some left over. I have somewhere to put it. And it can go back into the bottom of my purse until I stop it. Um, yeah. It's perfect. And for me, when I first started using it, it was it was perfect for putting the volcano because I was vaporizing so much. I was like, hey, this it was like, it, it all had its needs. It, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> It just works. It's like, I, I don't know what else to say. It's like, why do you like this much? Because it works. You know, and, and you want a different kind of a grind while well, you grind it either a shorter period of time or a longer period of time. And there's a little bit of a technique you get to learn. And and then there you go. Yeah, it'll float uh-huh. in water, right, John? It'll float in water? 100% submersible underwater. But if you, like, put it tight to your body in a tight pair of shorts or something like that, you're going to compress the lid. But I've had lots of people go swimming with them. <clears throat> And at the end, like, I can't believe that thing's like watertight, man. I always swim yeah. across the thing, and I got up there, and my girl's with me, and I opened up the thing and pulled out the mini bic. And I was like, there you go, mini bic. And he, I lit my joint with it. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep, <laughs> keep, keep, keep your stash dry, you know, if you're stuck in the rain. Smell proof. I, I remember, yeah. you know, just well, I, I, the first time I, I had a, I had a just right full of weed, like some really stinky mini cushion. I went into Safeway and I was walking around there. I pulled up my container. I was like, I kind of smiled. And I'm standing in the line. He goes, oh, What's this? It's a med tank. I go, What's that? Because it's a smell proof. He goes, Smell proof. I said, Yeah. I cracked over, like, Whoa. And every, and it wasn't one, but like 15, 20 people are looking at me. I'm like, I guess these work, right? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Testing grounds. <laughs> right? right. And that was like, that was like in 2013. I'll never forget. It was just funny. I was, because I just got them. I got them. Uh, it was a week. It was the first week of January of 2013, and um, I started the company in February, February 17th of 2013 is when I started the company for for the product. And uh, the U.S. division started theirs on January 29th or something like that. Just the way how the whole system worked as we worked together to bring it to market. So it was uh, it was basically it was three of us that uh, started this uh, whole big push to make it uh, to get to the patients and today out of the US they're publicly trading got 26 people working for them I got my company up here and uh, for me I haven't taken a penny from my company I put it all back in education because I got a pension I'm fine this, yeah. this is about this is about uh, this is about what a, yeah it's kind of a good thing to see how it's just taking off yeah. as in cannabis as in this plant and what's happening with it over the years look where we were 10 years ago we were having like there's three clubs in Vancouver to there being over 150 and now look at Toronto and, and mind you out of the 150 clubs here now this I've seen I was driving around today with uh, Mark from Pure Hemp and uh, I can't believe how many have shut down here and be forced to shut down how many how many vacancies have happened but then on the next note we now have four completely legal 100% by the city licensed to sell and distribute cannabis so that's a start, right? I mean, it's a start. It's a loss in one hand, but it's a start in a new direction. It's access, and I see something different as we're seeing we're seeing legalization at the same time. <clears throat> They're giving it. They, these companies that have opened up here. I mean, I've been in this industry full force since two thousand and five. Part of the uh, Green Cross opening, which is the second Apache Club in Vancouver, I've seen how many erupt, and the owners of these first four, I don't even know who they are. They're investors with money. Right, so it wasn't the old school. It's not like the originals are the ones working here. It's not like the, I would say, the roots to this industry. These these are suits behind, behind storefronts. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah, and that gets us on to the legalization topic, which was uh, where I was going to go so shortly, so <laughs> might as well be now. <laughs> well, I'll, just, I'll just kind of, like I said, we'll probably jump all over the place, you know? Like, oh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> we're going to get there anyway. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to go to break. We're going to go to break in a minute here, too, so. All right, all right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice short question. <laughs> All right, nice short question. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll let right. that one go first. So we'll, let, let, we'll, we'll tell you what. We'll, when we come back from, we'll come from back from break. We'll talk about the legalization stuff, and uh, we have uh, the, you guys had the Lift Expo out there. Yeah, we've got, we've got yeah, rosin. Was, probably some some rosin questions. Say, questions. I'm gonna smoke some in. rosin right now. That's my yeah. Name. So we can get into all that stuff after we get uh, we get back from break. Sounds good. Okay, double so. dip some terpenes. Oh, yes. some terpenes. terpenes. Oh, we've recently been discussing those. Yes, I, I just yes. had to throw that in there before we go to break. Uh, nice. <laughs> we'll have to discuss them, too. Yeah, yeah. We recently had somebody on the show discussing terpenes in depth, actually. Yeah. It was uh, quite interesting. It was. It was. It was good. All right. Uh, so let's go to break, and we're going to hear some more of uh, the Hicks and the song Good Old BC Smoke. And when we return, Kim and I will keep this conversation going with John. You're listening to the Pace Radio Show here at lifestyleradio.ca. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Time to get on this Lifestyle Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Hit stash the greatest hash with buds they do grind. They roll them fat like baseball bats for 20 all the time. They grow like trees with bumblebees. They smoke them with a burning flame. So crystal white, it's dynamite. The BC Mary Jane. Oh, the good old BC smoke is the best smoke you can soak. And the best smoke you can smoke is the good old BC smoke. Oh, the good old Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like Wick, Ebb and Flow, Drip, or Aeroponic System, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. BMA offers cannabinoid testing. So if you want to prove you've got good medicine, head to BMA Hydroponics and prove it. The National Task Force on Medicinal Cannabis is a group of not-for-profit organizations dedicated to influencing government policy with factual evidence. Our mission is to ensure that a constitutional medical program is developed that will address the concerns of all Canadians that require therapeutic cannabis. The task force is looking for dedicated people who are willing to contribute to our cause. We have formed this task force to foster a unified approach and focus on lobbying the federal government and Health Canada. We represent the combined expertise of thousands of patients with more than a decade of experience. As a task force participant, you, your business, or your group will have an opportunity to show that you care and offer your unique skills to promote the cause. If you would like to get involved, go to medcanataskforce.org. That's medcanataskforce.org and use the Contact Us link to get started. Help us help you. Tune into the Pace Radio Show and catch Kim Cooper, Debbie Stoltz Giffen, or Allison Merlin along with myself, Al Graham, as we talk to Canadian and international cannabis advocates who are working hard to help patients and to end cannabis prohibition. Catch us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at lifestyleradio.ca. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. 
CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of auto flower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. All first-time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t-shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995, 1-844-843-7995, or visit us at ccnexus.global. Last joint in the bag. Oh, take me where the potheads go and the weed, it smells like skunk. And have a treat, make the heat, a butter made from bunk. Oh, spark a bowl and torch the knives, take that doobie down. Roll a blunt, a VC skunk, this is the best bud ever found. Oh, Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to the Page Radio Show. Well, we can be found live in about five or six uh, websites. You can also catch our podcasts at uh, YouTube, Mixcloud, and in the USA, uh, you can catch us at our iHeartRadio. Tonight, our bumper music was by the British Columbia-based band, The Hicks, and their song, Good Old BC Smoke. The band has many cannabis songs, and we play a few of them here, but I recommend that you look them up on YouTube and other uh, audio locations, because they got some pretty good tunes. Tonight on the Pace Radio Show, we're joined by John Burfello and my joint host, Tim Cooper. Well, you two, we've got uh, about another 45 minutes and many, yeah. many topics to uh, discuss as we were talking off break. We're going to have to have John come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's got a wealth of information, that's for sure. That's uh, right. The knowledge that he's accumulated in the last uh, year since his accident is is just enormous. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the topic. Dedication so. is, is amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Ken. before we yeah before we went off on the break, we were just getting into legalization and what that's doing to uh, different parts of this country, because there is such a widespread difference depending on where you live, what is going to happen to you and what the rules are. Uh, the task force that's currently in place by the feds and the new ACMPR regulations for patients that are not under the MMAR. Uh, they're affecting everything. They're affecting things on the provincial level. They're affecting the dispensary situation at BC. What's going on out there, Dad John, and what's your feel of all of this situation? Well, I just did a bong rip just so I can kind of clear my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, it's all <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, I still haven't received a letter from Health Canada telling me what my next steps are for one. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, that was only uh, done in Quetta. Uh, so as it stands right now, this whole new system that everybody's trying to run for, I've heard people uh, have gone back to the doctors and they used to have like 50 grams a day and now they only have five. Um, I, I don't know how the whole system is going to play out. Um, but one thing is, is we can still continue to grow our own. Now, licensed producers, some of them are calling to have some of these clubs shut down. Well, other licensed producers, from what I'm hearing... And what I know that just happened here in Vancouver, a new one just opened up was Aurora, A-U-R-O, which is connected with Aurora from what I understand. So we're having licensed producers or somewhere, a forum being involved with the new clubs that are happening up in Vancouver that are being, uh, well, they have business licenses. So mm -hmm. there, there's, there's, there's so many. An internal struggle within the LPs then. Some want a monopoly and some are saying, no, let's work with them. Well, that's what that's what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing, uh, and I'm pretty sure you're hearing the same thing. Where there's certain groups that are calling for the shutdowns. Um, I'm not going to start naming LPs or who they are. They, we all got an idea what's happening in an industry, and certain ones are supporting because patients' access is what it comes down to, and it's not one person's monopoly or whatever it is. I mean, when everybody says, shouldn't every patient be an LP? Like I got a license well, to grow. Correct. We are licensed producers. That's what I said. I, I, I bought seeds from Health Canada to grow Health Canada weed. And it says that I can produce it. Now, a doctor can prescribe it and distribute it. Hmm. So between a doctor and myself, we're a pretty good team. Yeah. That's where I look at it, right? So, I mean, and, and that's I bought seeds from Health Canada. So, 
I, I didn't buy a clone and and go from there. So I mean, that was the beginning structure of the pl- of the system. I, I got my license in two thousand and six. I think I was like seventeen hundred or you know in the, in the two thousand range of people having licenses at that point. Where I know some of the people are the, in, in the top ten. So <clears throat> yeah, here we are today, where there's they anticipate a million people are going to have some form of way of of access to cannabis by the end of twenty seventeen. That's a fantastic. That's completely yeah. different from what it was, you know, ten years ago, twelve years ago, when there was only a couple thousand people. Where a system they spent thirty one million dollars on. Right, yeah. So, and there, there's all kinds of talks about that too, because of of what of what the system, the money they spent on a system, and now the money they're spending on enforcing. I don't know. They're not even enforcing anything. I don't even know what to say about it right now. They could have had every 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 right and every time at the one point to inspect gardens as they were being uh, licensed, and I think the way the system changed and how things have changed. It's just setting up for just more of a battle is what they're doing to us right now. They're raiding all these clubs. They're going after people that aren't licensed where they have licenses, but they've moved their license and Health Canada hasn't done anything about it. And it's it's basically a shitstorm right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, uh, um, well, I mean, on the whole, I think at least we've got something. Like right now, oh, with the new ACMPR, we've got you know every every patient now is no longer in fear of losing their kids. They're no longer in fear of going to jail. They're no longer in fear exactly. of you know losing their homes. Yes. So we've got some coverage. Um, but I, I I like to always point out what I call the add-ins to the base structure. The base structure is sound. They said, okay, well here's what it is, but this. And but that okay with the limits and um, you know uh, you're not allowed to grow if you had the criminal record from you know growing because you yeah, were stuck in the middle of being having your health Canada changes take place. You get busted with two no, but you know that, uh, that was all this stuff. That was like that when I applied. If you had a criminal record, you can you can be a DG, but if you had a criminal record, you could still be a patient. Yeah. yeah. How does that but change? With, but with yeah. the AC, ACMPR, it's you can all you can do is go through an LP if you have a criminal record as a patient. I think so. Oh, wow. so yeah, you can't grow. You have to check off a little box that says that you haven't been convicted of a drug offense in the last ten years. You don't need to give a criminal record check like a designated grower does. You just have to check that little box saying that you've never been convicted. And I don't know whether well, that's it, part of their well, part of their check before they issue the license, but they did say if they ever find you make a mistake, they'll pull your license. Well, that finds interesting for someone like myself that's been part of a system. Um, if, if let's say if I if I did have a, a charge of possession of marijuana before I got licensed, because I've had a license since two thousand and six, so it's over ten years. Mm. Um, you, I, w- I wouldn't be able to continue to grow, even though I've been in the system. Well, I, I, that's I, questionable. I, we don't, we don't know. That's kind of the way it looks. Like they're trying to set patients up yeah. for a fall, but people are still unsure. You know what? Here's the whole thing, Kim. And I say to everybody, goes, "What do I do? What I'm going to go see my yeah. doctor." I said, "Don't do anything until you get a letter in the mail from yeah. Health Canada saying what your next steps are." Because right now, to me, it's all hearsay. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, nobody's been yeah. denied. Nobody's been denied. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think if you're no MMAR, one... you should you don't do anything. Stay with yeah, MMAR. Yeah. Don't make any changes. Keep your MMAR intact. But this new system is good for new patients that didn't okay, get so, into MMAR. So that's a good thing to know. And that's see some things I've been so busy and I, I haven't really paid attention to certain parts. And that's yeah. that's that's one thing for new patients. At least or, they have access to can grow. Yeah, and that's that's or, important. Yeah, or patients that were forced to move that were covered under the injunction. Um, those ones that were forced to move, you know, now they, now they can go back. Yeah, they can make those changes, and that that was what was requested from some people. But it is a it is the different program. Yeah. yeah, and you can actually, in fact, overall grow more plants overall with the new system as well, because the old system yeah. it, it was ridiculous numbers one point seven two or whatever the hell it was. And uh, per for uh, outdoor and four point whatever uh, for indoor. Now they rounded it up to two and five. 
and and also they can have up to like eight eight over eight growers at one location now whereas before it was like you know two dgs four growers type deal so and this changed with the amount of offers you can have on one property i do know that so there's a few different changes and at the same time i mean i see a legalization platform coming in 2017 it has to happen and i always say we have a law of mandatory sentencing for six months or more so they give everybody a chance to grow five plants and we have these licensed producers and we got patients. Well, I just want to see prices drop at the same time with everything from nutrients to, to access of like a little club. I was at a club down here today, guys, down on Maine and Hastings. They sell the, they sell the same kind of they sell all the other clubs for 12 and 11 and $15 for $4 and $5 a gram. And it was lined up around the street. It was just packed. Yeah. No, and, yeah. and, and it was, and, and they were doing it in the downtown east side, and there was nobody down there with being. You know, these were all people that truly needed that access to that medicine for what they were going through, because you could yeah. see. I, I, and I was down there with, I was, we're in the war zone. I said, "There's no war zone down here." It says they're scared of you. I said, "They're forced here," and, and I, I was a part of that whole um, four pillage project and going back with. Uh, Green Cross again back in 2006, 2007, and they started the harm reduction platform here in Vancouver and, and the whole thing. So it's, uh, I think it's a big part of uh, seeing how the city is, is doing better just with having access to cannabis here for people. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. With legalization um, coming, full legalization, they say coming is, is coming next year. At some point, uh, I, th- I think uh, that just, now yeah. they're saying 2018, maybe. Is I think that's just the, I think that's just the wording is going to come out in the spring of yeah, 2017. But and then but and then the rest of it, the implementation of it all, will probably be in yeah, 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 yeah. But with there, my 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 point where I was going to go with that is, um, I heard somebody from the task force say that there will probably only be one program. So there will be legalization. It'll be patients. It'll be uh, non-medicinal use. It's all going to be rolled into one program. Well, how, do one you, how do you think that's going to work out? <laughs> I've seen new, those new forms that I see patients are filling out. It doesn't say conditions. It says a doctor's signature in the mouth. That's right. So, you don't yeah. have, so, so it doesn't say. It, <laughs> and, and finally, they're not giving you, this is what's wrong with you. Just say, yeah, here you yeah. go. The doctor so, page is... Like one page for the doctor. One page, right? yeah. Oh, to get a yeah. prescription, yeah, there, it's nothing. The prescription form to work for a doctor to write is nothing. It says here uh, this many grams per day for this law, and yeah. here's my yeah. signature. That's it. There's yeah. there's nothing else. No, on it. no, no. What's wrong with you? Anything you can have no. a sore foot. No. They don't care. That's yeah. that, that that to me made me smile. Like I look, I look, yeah. oh, finally, they don't have to be diagnosed with when we're dying or you're severely injured or yeah. it's the end. You know what I mean? Right. It's not like yeah. we've changed that that. Who, if you if if you have something heavy anxiety because you had a bad day at work, here's a prescription to get some pot. Right on. Yeah. So well, you think you, most everybody will become a patient then? Well, we aren't we all patients? Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. That's well, right. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Right? Yeah, that's right. Cannabis is, yeah. is the most. Is it, it's like I say, it regulates. Uh, I always say it's a massive regulator to the central nervous system. It's 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 needed to help with all the different pain, pleasure, mood, all the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, talking, yeah. talking about legalization and the way that things are moving forward with that, you guys uh, out there on the West Coast just had your had the lift the lift expo. Yep. Yep. And how was that? You well, once this? again, uh, yeah, of course I had I had a booth. Of course, Med Tanner had a booth, course, and we also had, and and of course it was uh, surrounded and packed and. Uh, Lots, lots of great people walking around. Like I said, it was a little different from the Lyft conference that was in Toronto. Uh, just that you have 10 million people to probably a million people here in Vancouver. Here is more more business, I would say. More people curious. Um, not as many sales, more of business to business. Mm-hmm. People more interested and in, in, in where like patients were going to like said, producers. Uh, growers were going to the new growing mediums. Um, and then, of course, there was all of the bongs and seed companies were there from Greenhouse Seeds. Uh, you know, it's just Kyle, of course, cropping seeds. He was up front and center selling it. See, every, it, was, it was a good wide variety of the industry. It wasn't like what we saw before. Um, there was no selling of cannabis there, that's for sure. Right. Uh, I know, there was uh, no smoking in it. There was, 
there was they wanted medical cards for people who went on one side. And I said, I never got asked once. And they're like, well, of course you didn't. <laughs> 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 like I just kept walking through everybody. I was like, yeah, hey, no, it's like everything like stopping us. Like so, they, they, it was it was beginning stages, but it, it's it was really good to see it actually happen here in Vancouver because. Yeah. It just hasn't hasn't. Tracy came out here. Uh, we tried to do one there years ago. It was up close, a personal, really nice little thing we had up on Main Street. I can't give the name of it off my heart right now, but it was it was a, and that was really close. It was all compassionate clubs and patients, and 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 and, and Rial was there, and Philip was there, and John Connor was there. Like it was, and 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 everybody was there. You know, they, and, had, a, it was, they had a good list of speakers. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it did. Really good, really yeah. good list of speakers. Yeah. And, and even the new conference coming up here, the ICBC conference, the International right. Conference of uh, International Cannabis Business Conference. That's on the 13th and 14th here. I'll be going to that too. So. Our, uh, our oh, sponsor, I know. From Toronto went out too to lift and yeah. from Toronto and from the Ontario area. I know Lisa Campbell went out as well. Uh, Erno went out. Yeah, yeah, I saw her. Our, our sponsor, or one of our sponsors here, uh, Nexus uh, Seeds. Uh, they had uh, ten employees that uh, went out to that as well. Yeah. So yeah. there's, uh, yeah, they're, they're from all over. So it was, it was good to see that way. Uh, you, like, in Toronto, they had a vapor lounge. I understand you guys didn't have a vapor lounge out there. No, we didn't. We also we just recently also had the Legends Valley Music Festival on Vancouver Island that brought out like ten thousand mm-hmm. people to a bio cup and a music festival that was pretty amazing. There's also wow. some other it was, it was pretty cool to put the artists like uh with Daniel Wesley, Beth Naked, Sheepdog, Sublime. Uh, yeah. it was it was it was a pretty cool event too. So we're starting to see well there's what, three cups coming up next week it seems yeah. like. We have a. Uh, there's, there's a lot of events happening in, in yeah, Canada we now, that's for sure. <laughs> we had on uh, the Great Canadian Cannibal, who were sponsors of the Bio Cup. Yep, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. another sponsor of it. Yeah, yeah we yeah. talked about the Bio Cup when they were on. Yeah, it was that's up right. and coming when they were on. That's correct, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. yeah and then up and coming in Toronto soon, we have another cup coming up, and that's the Karma Cup. It's yeah, I'll be up to the yeah. Karma Cup. Well, yeah, that's in a month's time. Yeah. Up right now. I hear the yeah. bong. You hear the I bong. hear the bong. I hear the bong. <laughs> so yeah, the Karma Cup's coming up. Uh, that's, that's another great cup that we have going on. Yeah, it looks like Sarah's really putting a lot of work into it. it looks really yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <coughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. with all of these events, one after another, for someone like myself, it's it's it gets it, it's, it gets to a point where you got to really pick and choose, and it gets hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. so many amazing people in the in the industry, so I'm just like flying in, like, hanging out. Gonna walk around, yeah. and say hi to everybody. Spend a week in Toronto. I'll be there for a whole week. Well, you know, it allows you to go and say hi. Yeah, it allows you to get together with the people that you only see occasionally, or you know, you might. Talk it's to a them family that you meet all over the world, and yeah. it's interesting. I, 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 I don't know. I get to see Franco over since since 2010. And I've seen him in Barcelona, Amsterdam, of course, Canada, Toronto a few times. Now he came to Vancouver. It was great. It's like this huge Canada family that follows, we follow each other around. A huge yeah. audience. I get to see you when I come to Toronto, and I, I, I get to see Lisa was just over here, and I get to see Tracy, and, and I get to, gonna go and see Jeff. And, and, and it's, it's, it's really awesome. Like I said, it's, it's the family that, that brings you in and holds you. <laughs> and helps you and gets you and, and it's 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 quite a, it's a cannabis community that's why we love it so much that's right that's very right. one love that's one right. love and, that's <laughs> you, you know, you're well known and then I'm like it's, it's a huge cannabis community out there absolutely yeah. and cannabis now you not only are a connoisseur of just cannabis but you're also a very avid uh mad scientist kind of a guy when it comes to something else I want to talk about and that's rosin oh yeah I want to talk to you about as, rosin as I'm, <laughs> as, I'm, as, I'm, as I'm raping some up off the parchment paper and dipping it into these beautiful terpenes um, and, and the mad scientist as, as most people know because of my channel and stuff like that I have a gas chromatography a GC it's a SRI 8106C it's specifically made for testing cannabinoids, so I can test up to six different cannabinoids. It tells me the ratios of what I'm doing. So I have a lot of fun with that, but 
I'm not a credible lab, so I don't test for people because it's it would create controversy. But what it's done for me is gave me such a, a great education on rosin, on how long to squish for, on, on how many waxes are pushed into the methanol so I can see how it floats. I've seen lots of things from overshadows to uh, just all kinds of different extractions. And, and the machine has really led me down to a whole other path of education that I haven't really got to talk about to anybody with because I'm kind of done a bunch of videos and you're looking at these videos and you're like, well, how can I explain this? Because I'm not a scientist, but I love this so much and I work so long with Dr. Hornby, so it's not like I don't know how to read cannabinoid profiles. I've looked at tens of thousands of profiles over the years sitting beside Dr. Hornby from 2006 and 2010. So it's it's really interesting to see now because what I saw, say, back in 2007, which was someone brought in some hash and it was uh, they used a, 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 what they call it, a trim machine. And it heated it up and we put it in methanol and he heated it and these get basically ball-like substances that are floating around and it. Look, it almost looked like it was like 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 crack or something it was like a white substance and we thought it had something to do with the pam that they were spraying on actually the machine so it wouldn't do anything well speed up to about a month ago when i'm sitting in my lab my own lab and someone does an overshatter and i'm also squishing rosin and as i'm squishing the rosin and i'm testing dry sift and i'm testing bubble hash the same product and i squish it i put it in the methanol it heats up and I get a, a floaty wax substance, it looks like, in there. Now, I instantly thought it was parchment paper. But it turns out through the heat extraction, we're actually converting and we're getting this wax. We're getting more terpenes that I'm seeing because I've been talking with some other people, of course. So, you know, rosin is, is a really interesting thing because if you do, say, a seven or nine second press with a hotter heat, you're going to get more flavor, but it's going to be more, it, it butters out quicker. So if you press for, say, like three seconds, uh, a lower heat like I have, it's always almost like a snap of pollen. Some people even think it's more like a shatter because of the consistency. So I'm seeing just difference with all of that and my own little research that people are picking up on. They're like, hey, dude, I was seeing that stuff that you were doing. And there was a gentleman, <laughs> and there was a gentleman here. He, he, he just bought He goes, that's because you did it like that. And he goes, and I see the snap pull. He goes, the longer it's like, I'm like, well, that's what I'm talking about, right? So it's, it's the ones that pay attention, and, and, and I'm just learning with you guys, and that's the best part. We're all learning from, from someone watching Darren, D420K, uh, carding dry sift and seeing the heads jump on the back of his card. He's like, hmm, that's some kind of static going on. That led to a video of me putting a DVD with parchment paper and dragging it across parchment to someone squishing. Uh, someone was watching us. This is awesome, guys, and I'll never forget how Sorgon Sal talked about it. He goes, um, we were squishing hash and doing pulling through parchment to make it melt better. Well, he didn't have any good hash. He didn't have a ha hair on, so I guess he used a hair uh, curler, and he squished something, and it squished so long, out oozed an oil. And hence, rosin, and we got a video, and then I started, I did the depth of BHO video that just really changed the whole game. I watched that video. <laughs> and you know what? I was so excited. I was, I was like, check the death of BHO. I got to do this. It's just so awesome. Like, you, I got it. And I didn't really think it through. It's just the way it worked. And 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 the and the and the and the gentleman in the video, Anthony, he did everything BHO. He had ovens, everything. I'm like, dude, you got to come and check this shit out. Yeah. He still makes BHO, but he smokes rosin. And he's like, dude, yeah. check out the rosin. Right, so. <laughs> And 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 then I did I did I did frozen. I squished. I would make bubble hash. I'd freeze it in the in the freezer. And what happened with that? Like I have all kinds of different stories with how this all came about. I had some hash that I had left in the freezer for over a year. I forgot about it. So I pulled it out of the freezer, wrapped it in parchment paper. I mean, in in a, in a 25 micron little screen, wrapped it in parchment paper, and squished it. Oh my god! The flavor <laughs> was amazing. It was like, what the hell? It had a little crack on it, a little bit of moisture in it, so I was doing different presses vertically to let the moisture drop out, little temperatures, smaller squish. But the terpenes in that compared to using dry bud, is, it, it's really night and day, right? But at the same time, there's moisture, so don't want to, you know, I don't know if it's going to cause any kind of problems, but, you know, like, it's we, we just started playing with it. And I had one yeah. guy telling me that, I squished bacon, I squished orange peels, I squished everything to see what I can get out of that shit. I laughed at him. 
Uh, well, I know I've watched so many of your videos from the evolution of it. I started watching them right around the time that you started putting them out. And as they came out, I watched them. And the evolution was quite dramatic uh, and, and, and comical. Um, I mean, you went from doing it with the, the, hair, the uh, hair straightener in the, in the uh, shed there. And then uh, it went to the foot press after that. And... Uh, the arm <laughs> press and all of these different styles, and then you did the video oh with everybody God. up on the stage with everybody but doing their different rod and press styles. That was, that was so much um, fun. I mean, okay, it's yeah, been was... hysterical to watch, but also educational. No, no. I remember in the beginning, we all thought we were having heart attacks because we were so sore from squishing so much and pressing so hard on the table because when you're leaning over top of your chest, I was pushing it like, ah. Oh! Or the back of our arms started. Get, I mean, we were we were causing some injury in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> some of the videos that was oh, I was pressing rosin like like a lot last night. <laughs> How can we get more? How can we okay. make it flow? Then we got wider presses, and then we're burning it, and the people are getting clamps, and they're using jacks, and they're putting these plates on it, and they're too yeah. wide in my opinion, and and it's got a different flavor. You know what? Yeah. Till the day okay. I still use a hair straightener because it's it's for me. That's all yeah. I need is a hair straightener yeah. and a hand clap. What works? Yeah. Well, the first Personal one size was the, dance. Yeah, and the, it was great the one, too, the, when you got the t-shirt pressed delivered to Cannabis Culture. But, oh, man, I'm so excited was, to do that. Yeah, uh, that, that, that was good. No, that was fun with Brian. You know, that press, if you guys sitting right in front of me, it's right there. <laughs> I wish you could see it. was straight out. Right beside me, sitting right there on the floor still. I mean, it didn't I, we just evolved from that one. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> it was once again too wide, and the width of it was burning the resin, flattening it out, and it was making like a shatter type. And I made it, I can get it to like a snap and pull, and people think it's actually shattered, but it's not. It's rosin. And you've seen that some of my stuff. It's see through, it's nice, it's golden, it's great. But of course, that all comes down to, to everything from the moisture levels, and I learned that with the, those bottle packs, that 62%. Nails it for squishing. So if you if really if if you're rosining, sixty two percent humidity is the magic number. There you go. Yeah, I'm, it I'm works. Writing that down. <laughs> it just it it just it works, and it's it's. I remember throwing the, the, those packs in there. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this works. This is like it actually gives. I'm getting consistency again. Standardization for patients, medicine. And, and even with that, and, and it keeps those terpenes. So if you even have the flowers, you get this. You know, when we you know get a bag of weed and over a month it gets dry and you don't smell it anymore. Yeah. We got to keep that. Go ahead. Just, yeah, just the uh, you mentioned the hair dryer. Now, yeah. just um, not all hair dryers are or not hair dryers or the um, hair, straighteners. hair straighteners. Hair straighteners. Not all hair straighteners are built uh, the same way as far as temperature control. Is there certain mm. heatings that? Uh, I, I can honestly say um, there's all kinds of different temperatures. I've used my heat gun so much, so I know anywhere between 160 to 180. It's a lower temp. I'm not hitting everything up in the 200s. I remember we used to turn the, the old one right up on 15 to 300, 289. Um, right now, I'm just using a old Revlon one, the first one. I think the second one I bought, the first one finally packed it in, and it's going to be part of my museum one day, I'll tell you that much, because... <laughs> I got all these broken pieces and things. I'm like, okay, I'm just putting that in a box. And then everybody's like, I'm throwing away. I'm like, see that over there? That's my first grow. I have my first MMIR grow of Medicush in a jar, Nurk number one from 2000. <laughs> you know, like, why? Oh, that's done. I, I have, uh, you'll see, I, I, got, I got some old memorabilia from even from Cannabis College from the days. It's, it, it's, it shows a part of history and a part of, of what we've done. And, and one day I just want to share with everybody. Well, I guess I do every day, I guess, when I show people. Check this out. <laughs> right on. Well, Love it. it. It's Have you seen this, Bob? <laughs> Sorry. What was it? It's all part of what it's taking in order to uh, change law. You yes. Know, get, get, get all, yeah. It's all part of history. You know, everybody's yeah, doing, everybody yeah. doing what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's patients Ooh, helping patients. Get coffee there for a second. That's okay. It's patients helping patients, and uh, you know, we're and voicing our opinions in public and talking to whoever will listen to us, um, and even some of those that don't. 
<laughs> yeah, and you know what? I think it's just it's it's exactly it's patients talking to patients, and at the same time, it's changing. It's mainstream media from from Charlotte's Web to the to how you know just even I look at my neighbor, cancer saved. I mean, died of bone cancer and sent home to die two over two years ago. And if it wasn't for this concentrates in the community. He would be here today, and today he's down fighting for a dispensary right now uh, to keep the doors open and, and stating in how if it wasn't for this particular dispensary that supplied him with his medicine, that he would not be here today. So, I mean, we're, we're still fighting every day, yeah. you know? And it's Yeah, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> there, there's no, really, like, people say, well, legalization's coming up. I guess, uh, you know, you've, you've sort of won your battle, and... Now, no, what we are gonna, now what are you going to do? And I say, no, we haven't. You know, this will continue up on for many, many, many moons uh, after it's legalized because there's always going to be change and there's always going to be people who are going to be trying to get things to, to go back to other ways of prohibition. That's right. I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting in front of me and everything that sits in front of me that I use for my pain control and what helps me every day, I can't access through the new system. I, I have I have pure TC distillate. I have terpenes. I have rosin. I have hash. This is what works for me. And a little bit of, of, of weed that I put on top of my bong. This this isn't going to be available through the system. Probably not for a long time. So still scary no. times. We're still fighting, right? We still got to fight because this is what is is what I see is saving the ones that are in. The, I mean, yeah. a joint helps, but the concentrates is what really changes the game for when it comes to dealing with any kind of disease or condition. Well, this is it. And that's what I meant earlier by the add-ons for the new ACMPR plan that they have. You know, they've, they've done things like add in that, um, you know, extract, certain extracts aren't allowed. Well, you're not allowed to use organic solvents now. Well, that means people can't make tincture uh, if they're not allowed to use uh, ISO or alcohol. Uh, that's so I can water you know, uh, you know, if it's an organic, you're not allowed to use it to make your extract. As far as I'm concerned, that's st stepping on the toes of the ruling that we already won in Allard. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you, you, can't use, you can't use the explosive stuff. You know, well, but organic solvents is how it's stated. Yeah. So that presents a problem. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, there's rosin. Rosin is legal. Yeah. Rosin is legal. Yeah. Rosin, rosin is legal. Is legal. Yeah. Rosin is legal. But a lot of people make their tincture out of alcohol, um, and alcohol we can is use, an organic. We can use a glycer. So we can use a glycerin. So there's different ways, and 100 percent doesn't say you can go buy a bottle of Everclear and soak it in cannabis or put it in your wine. You know, are we allowed to do that? It's going to be interesting how the system is. Yeah. Not like, you know, it's. These new clubs in town here have all kinds of different tinctures and stuff like that. So, and most of them are alcohol based. Um, a lot of tincture is alcohol based, uh, and unless uh, you you're requesting it not to be, um, and that that's going to create a problem because, as far as I know, that was already all one one. Uh, sorry, I said Allard, I meant Smith. Um, uh, with our extracts, it was all one in Smith that we have the right to extract. What are they doing? Isn't that um, being a, no? They didn't appeal it. I have I don't know. Smith is done. Is done. Yeah. Yeah. And same with our case with um. <clears throat> oh, it's done too. We're done. That whole continue yeah. to grow is awesome. So I mean, that was that was my biggest thing. Don't take away my right to grow. That's you know, right. It's, it's just it gets me out of bed every day, and it, and. It, and, and even if it's five plus, just don't take that right away, because yeah, yeah. that's my right. So, and, and they've they've solved that. They've given patients their right to grow. If you've got a legal prescription, then you've got a legal right to grow. If you're part of the old structure under MMAR, your grandfathered in, you're still covered up by your injunction. So that holds. So nothing changes for you unless you need it to change. I mean, for that, do I have to reapply? I don't. Have to, I'm not. I don't no. have to reapply or nothing. No. I'm just like. You do not. I do nothing. I just don't have to worry about it ever again. You're done. You have to keep your pink papers and you continue. I still have seven, eight cards. <laughs> I still have one in my wallet right now. I have a card yeah. on me. That's what does yeah. my card say? Let me pull yeah. it on my wallet right now with you guys live on here. So, you know what? Yeah. I still got my card. I keep it behind my driver's license. Great. April. Good play. 
I even give you the number <laughs> JHB one B zero. You know, it's like in, yeah, uh, the, and it's uh, it's got my address in there. Seven hundred and and fifty grams, five hundred and five thousand four hundred and ninety grams. I was allowed to carry. Yeah, one hundred twenty-two okay. plants, and and everybody's seen my garden. I don't care. I'm all over the damn internet. Yeah. I've probably never grown one hundred twenty-two plants ever, because it just it just keeps. I have certain things going, and yeah, I still have my card. The expiry date here is in uh, 13 seven twenty twelve. Last card. Yeah. You well, yeah, you're covered yeah. by the injunction. You it's don't just... have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, talking, yeah. talking about growing, uh, are you still growing with the same nutrients that you've been growing with for? That I knew you were growing with. I've been using Medi One since two thousand and nine. Uh, there you indeed, go. Yeah. It, it's what worked for me. It was one. It yeah. was easy. It was one part. Um, and then I, I tried tried a couple other things. I'd add ads into it from. From all different kind of just stuff. No, well, not really. <laughs> Medi One's what won my cups. Just that's all I used was Medi One and Promix. That was first place and second place for Ty for the Tuning Self Expo. That's all I ever used for 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 the for those particular ones. And even the one I did with Jeff was just plain old organic. And I flushed for thirty five days, and I hang dry for fourteen to twenty one days, and I normally keep that. Um, between 64 to 68 degrees and I feed the water you know like that's what I that's what works that's what works and that's what you did and it was fantastic yeah. you know to see that back it was back to back wins at the TY Expo wasn't that that's right and and, 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 yeah. and the funny Same. the best part of both that was is, is I was proving that WCB I was a medical patient that could grow his medicine it had nothing to do with anything else and and when I when I heard first place I was so surprised I even I, <laughs> when, they, when they called third like oh I didn't win fuck Second, I was like, yeah, I walk away. First, I was like, what? I, I won? Like, it was, it, was, it, was, it was empowering because it was like, yeah, screw you, work safe. This is what I do. This is my medicine. And, I, and, and, and that's why I continue fighting them because, I mean, they got to they gotta pick it for me even growing that up. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's right. Right? Because that's that, that been all. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's people, uh, this is my mission, right? Uh, a, a better education on pharmaceutical drugs, their true needs, and lifelong care during, dealing with traumatic pain or injury using amino acids, natural supplements, cannabis. Um, it's, it's part of my platform and it always will be. It's, uh, I'll take that to the, to the grave. That's, that's what I'm about. That's what drives me every day. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right, that's right. And you've grown some wonderful plants. You've got the trophies to prove it. You've got the videos online for anybody that wants to see them. Uh, I mean, from seed to harvest, it's all available there. Even showing different lighting systems and what they do to different plants and, and different nutrients and different soil bases, uh, different starting materials. I mean, you've got it all. Well, I'm, I'm curious myself, so why not just do it with everybody? And uh, I, I'm learning along with everybody else. And plus, I've had my license since 2006, and I've, I've, I've tried all kinds of different systems. And now it's... You, 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 have, you have a lab. You have all that testing. You've been able to do, you know, find something exactly that that, that works. works. All together. Yeah. And yeah, and then I love to show that to everybody, so it hopefully it works for them. I'm not looking for anything else. Just for hey, you know what? Uh, got me out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> got me out of a wheelchair. That's the really I really look at it. You know, uh, it was it was a big part, and it, and it did it again. It uh, it got me through my last surgeries. It, I've, I've done two major back surgeries with only cannabis for pain control. I did my lower spine, and then did my my upper my cervical. And they weren't little operations, and I'm all recognized but using the transdermal creams. And using those creams, uh, nine days after my surgery, it was like the, the, the stitches were gone. They couldn't believe it. And that was just all cannabis-based products. So, so you not only, like, some people would think that, you know, you know they smoke cannabis. And I deal with a lot of the public here in our small town. And that's what a lot of people think. But you've gone through a whole regime of using all different types of uh, Oh, know, I have caps. to. Yeah, yeah. I use creams every day. I take caps every night. 
consistency. It's just like taking any kind of medicine. It's not like you just cannot take it. And that's the biggest thing. We're going to talk more about this, and I know we are, because I really try to get that into people when dealing with a condition. If you're taking pharmaceutical drugs for it and now using cannabis, don't you think you need that consistency still? You just get up, smoke a joint one day, and the next day do something else. you got to find the same type of pattern to deal with what you're going through. Or you wind up being that roller coaster again. And I see that even with people who, who've gotten off the pharma but don't take consistent amount of, of THC dosing daily in order to deal with the condition. And and then people who do lead a better quality of life all the way around. Yeah. So it's yeah. there's, like there's so much you don't take them. You don't take them, you feel it. Yeah, you need it. It's 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 and, and when I have people I had <laughs> people used to live with me, they'd be like did you take your supplements today? Or you to, and and you would notice a difference, yeah, on certain things. So it's 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 consistency uh, with cannabis-based medicines is what people need and need to understand that if you're dealing with a condition that when you get up in the morning and and you have uh, you know twenty milligrams of THC, you don't need to get high if you get in the consistency of taking a same regimen of of those things. But like I said, we could talk a lot about that. Yeah, we sure could. And we're getting very low here on time. So we're gonna have to have you back on. Yes, oh, I'd love yes. to come back on. Yeah, you know what? Yes. We'll have you back on down the road and uh, learn more about everything. Yeah, Even we'll have a whole yeah. uh, half segment at least about dosing. Yeah, dosing, all that type of stuff. You know, the proper cannabinoids, everything. Oh what's yeah. what's worked for me, right? Even yeah. with microdosing and what we've learned through to the companies down in Colorado from what's happening all around the world. There's just so much education happening on, on such a broad scale right and, now. It's pretty cool. And, you know, especially with uh, more and more people talking about milligrams. You know, like, for a long time, people just smoked a joint. They didn't worry about the amount of milligrams that they got of THC or the amount of milligrams they got of cannabis or CBD or anything along that line. So well, now we know so much more now. Yeah, you know, there's still people, there's a lot of people out there that need to know all that stuff. Be type of stuff too that would be nice to well, be able to touch base. Just, just like from like uh, from Cheryl uh, from Haley Rose, you know, if she took, if she doesn't take enough milligrams of CBD to TAC, she has a seizure, and, and if she if she takes the proper amount, she leads a better quality of life. And that does the same thing with anything. It's we're scratching the surface with terpene profiling and, and TC profiling. I mean, I like in front of me, I have a TC distillate with a certain type of terpene. I, I can now, I can pro things that work for me. I see, see different, like when you see the video that Mark did with me in the hospital when I just had surgery, he put 15 terpenes underneath my nose. Two of them took my pain away. That, that, I've never, that, that to me was the most amazing thing I've ever felt. And that alone is, is a whole nother talk. Like, it was like, what the hell, right? But, <laughs> it is. Yeah, talking, sure. talking about other topics, we are down to about the last uh, three minutes here. Yeah. Uh, so, Kim, have you got one final question? Yeah, we've got one final question, I guess, or should we just go right to the shout outs? Let's go to shout outs because if I get onto a question with John, it's going to take way too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be quick. I'll be quick. I'll be quick. I'll be like, yes, no. My only question is, please come back on and have a longer conversation with us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, John, uh, this is a chance for you to give a shout out to uh, uh, your website, YouTube uh, stuff, anything like that where people can find you. Oh, you can or, find or somebody me. else, whatever. Oh, okay. Someone else. Do I go? No, no, you're, you're se yourself, somebody else, whatever, whomever. Oh. Yeah, no, uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook, John H. Profello, um, uh, what website, uh, medtainercanada.com, uh, .ca. Um, YouTube is, uh, it was Vancouver Dragon 420, so it's Vandra 420, but if you Google my name, John Burfello, you will definitely find a lot of videos and stuff on me from Instagram, Vandra420, uh, 420 on Instagram. There you go, I'm done. You haven't been banned yet, eh? On Instagram. Why? I I don't. I just take pictures of my medicine. Others are. Yeah, yeah people I'm not. Are getting banned now for showing Others cannabis. Are getting banned. Okay, we got that question in. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. No, and and you know why? I, I I don't get on there. I don't try and push products or anything like that. Uh, I'm always a smiling, happy guy, and I show what 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 helps. And I think that's who knows. Cross my fingers. Knock on wood. Okay. Cautious fingers. Okay, Kim. 
Uh, yeah, my shout out is actually going to go to a person this week. Um, I would like to give my shout out to a wonderful lady by the name of Gail Quinn. Gail, you're in my thoughts. You're in my prayers. Gail, um, yes. you're in my heart. Um, yes, Gail. Love you, Gail. And Ted, we're with you, hon. Hang in there, guys. And we love you. And I'm going to throw a shout out to a friend by the name of Jason. Uh, today, I. Uh, Attended his celebration of life. Jason was uh, the man behind um, printing of the Grassroots Advocate, uh, the magazine by uh, people advocating cannabis education or pace. So, shout out to him. Uh, you uh, can find. I was going to say, ahead. I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Jim, Jim Harrison. He was also a fighting cancer patient that passed away, and he was a huge part of the education at CBD here in Vancouver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kim and uh, John. Just a reminder to let everybody know that I will be back next Wednesday with my joint host. It was Debbie Stoltz Giffen and her guest. And uh, I know who she's working on, but uh, not until it's confirmed. I'm not going to say. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you can find uh, Pace on Twitter at Pace Radio, and you can also like us on uh, Facebook. And we can be found on the web at pace-online.ca. Thank you as well to our sponsors, the friendly folks at BMA, BMA Hydroponics, who are on the web at bmahydroponics.ca. And CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler, found at ccnexus.global. LRAP, Lifestyle Radio, also a big thank you to our guest, patient advocate, John Brufello, and my joint host, Northern Ontario, Kim Cooper. Plus, a big thank you to you, our listeners, for tuning into the program. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Peace and. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Out Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, wait, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening.